The Greenwich Show, in partnership with Visit Greenwich, time after time. Series 2, made by you. Coming up on the programme, as knitting makes a revival across the country, we talk to a group who stitch and loop in a Greenwich local. Actually coming here, anyone can come along and join in Absolutely. and learn. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. We take a look at a charity changing lives by offering opportunities to get out on the Thames. Everybody just seems so eager to be nice to everyone else and it's that sense of family, like a little community. <laughs> And we see how the borough could be shaped through a joint student and community project at the new School of Architecture. We have just won a Royal Institute of British Architects National Award for Excellence in Architecture for this building. We need a way to somehow connect the, the stuff that the students are doing with, with the, the interests of the community. And I think that's the kind of job... The Greenwich, kind of made by you. Welcome to the fourth episode of the current series of The Greenwich Show, where we're exploring all things going on in the borough. Well, over the last couple of years, knitting has become hip, and there's a certain pub that's making the most of it. We sent Momtaz Begum Hossein to see what it is all about. So it's 7.30 on a Wednesday night, and I'm in serious need of a mocktail. I was coming to the pub. Is that seeing your friends and stuff is great, but it does get a little bit repetitive. What about doing something a bit different? Well, here at the Pelton Arms, you can do exactly that. I'm Susie Johns, and I guess I was the founder member of Knitting Night at the Pelton which is our local knitting group that meets at the Pelton Arms. I think it started in 2009, my maths is right. So I came along for Wednesday Needles, and um, I think I did that for six Wednesdays. <laughs> and I was the only one. But then, um, before long, we had quite a few people coming along. There is no such thing as a typical knitter. You can't say, you know, that person must be a knitter. It, it's so diverse. We've had quite a few men, I'm sorry to single out men, but you don't expect um, men to knit. We've had a, a wide range of ages, all walks of life, you'd be amazed. So there's been a massive resurgence in knitting over the last decade in the UK, including a massive 50% increase in the rise of yarn sales. So um, what's it actually like knitting in a pub? What's the reaction been from the public when they've walked in and seen you sitting in the corner with your needles? I think the most of us are used to us, um, but there are always some people that will talk about what we're knitting. But it's definitely a conversation starter, yes. seeing people knit. It is, and I've actually met people on the back of the well. Come to the pelt to knit the I write books on knitting, so, um, and I seem to have sort of built a reputation um, for some reason of doing novelty knits. This is my pet tortoise, um, who um, has a removable shell. Um, so this little shell comes off. He's an iguana. He's my favourite, I think. Um, and he's a very complicated knit. And I think, you know, some knitters just want, really want to challenge, don't they? You know? Knitting isn't just about toys and blankets. Gorilla knitting, which is a form of street art, has taken off like crazy here in the UK. But the question is, have you seen any of these gorilla knits on your travels through Greenwich? Coming here, anyone can come along and join in Absolutely. and learn. Absolutely, anyone, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. The more the merrier, always welcome. Do you know what, Bert? I could do some help myself. 
luckily I'm in the right place. Here on the Greenwich Show, we've previously featured the borough's maritime history and links with the Thames, from tall ships to Thames clippers. The river's part of life round here. For the next film in this series, which has been made by you, we're taking a look at the work of the Ahoy Centre, a water sports charity that is changing people's lives through sailing and rowing. Shipmate programme is our programme for 8 to 18 year olds um, and it just betters their skills through sailing, gets them up to an instructor level and then hopefully gives them a career choice if they want to choose it. Before I came to the Hoy Centre I was just pretty much hanging around on the streets, just getting into mischief as they call it. Now my time is pretty much focused on the centre just seeing what it does and how it helps people and just makes you want to keep giving to it. We called the Orcas but we're also the disability team because um, that's like people that have learning disabilities like me that uh, are sailing on the river. All I, all I want to say is that the Ahoy Centre has helped me in what I think is get out of the house, get a bit of fresh air, help, has helped with my confidence and I would recommend this place to anybody, even if you have learning disabilities or not. I didn't really have any plans of what I'll do in the future. I just thought job's a job, it's really hard to come by nowadays. I found boat building and boat building has made me think about what I want to do. I want to do something in carpentry. It's changed my life because I've now actually got a future when I pass this course. I can do anything now with the life I've done this. I can go abroad, sell my own business, anything. So it's given me lots of opportunities. I'm on the activity and leadership apprenticeship. It's been great, to be honest. I will be achieving my assistant instructors and then hopefully if I work hard enough I'll get my dinghy instructors, which will make me a qualified instructor. I just love boats in general and love getting involved in activities on the water. After this sprint show I'm hoping to get my dinghies instructors and I might go abroad and do some work in, in another country. We sail, we row, do team building exercises, just meet new people. Everybody's here because they want to be here and they want to sail, they want to vote. Everybody just seems so eager to be nice to everyone else and it's that sense of family, like a little community. <laughs> I know I'll always be able to use my skills that I've learned here, elsewhere. It's definitely benefited my life a lot, <laughs> changed it completely. It's pretty much given me a career out of it, so I can't thank him enough. And still to come on the Greenwich Show, we take a look at how the future buildings of the borough are being considered by those working in a futuristic building. Well, I love doing this because it's very multicultural. Yeah, is that cool? <laughs> the Greenwich Show, in partnership with Visit Greenwich, Time After Time. Series 2, made by you. Welcome back to The Greenwich Show. Our series looking at all the very best things about Greenwich, London's newest royal borough. 
We'd love to hear your views, so you can contact us by social media, email or website. And you can see all our films on our YouTube channel. You're watching The Greenwich Show, Series 2, made by you. Now, if you happen to miss some of the programmes we made last year, have a look and see what you missed. Hello, I'm Robert Gray, and you're watching the very first of the October edition of the November episode of The Greenwich Show. We actually originally had it so that we'd engage car cop and car people, and then suddenly we've got half of the borough coming down on a Thursday night. When you look back at Greenwich Cablevision, I think undoubtedly you have to pay tribute to a man called Morris Townsend, who had the vision. Um, unfortunately, he was probably 30 years ahead of his time. To actually run local programmes was, was a fantastic idea. Well, it started as a labour of love, of course, with Lady James, who, who was mourning the death of her husband, uh, built the structure to commemorate his greatest achievement, the defeat of the uh, pirates. It's a tale of great heroism and great importance for the way the world works now. Which changed the world. I mean, this is talking about a revolution, really. Without the cables and the technologies that were developed on this site, we either wouldn't have had the internet yet, it would be some years away, and it perhaps wouldn't be so efficient. It's now a community venue with a broader programme. It's not just about the spaces for hire, it's also about what we can do and provide for the community. And one of the big things that we do is provide our cultural programme. Well, I just wanted to make it so when you walk in, it's, it is like a mini pub. That was my idea originally. That's exactly what I wanted, and I think that's exactly what, I, what I've got. It'll be the biggest uh, tall ships event in on the River Thames, we think, for at least a quarter of the century, and the biggest event in London since the Olympic Games. So the sewage from the whole of South London um, was discharged down to here. It'll be our 150th anniversary next year in 2015, and we'll be celebrating that. We've been friends since we were 14, something like that. We talked about doing something you know, that involves space, involves food. Greenwich was the sort of place that shone out for us. It was a perfect place for a small neighbourhood restaurant. One of the things that I have found quite a lot of uh, along this stretch of foreshore is uh, some messages in bottles. We don't phone it in, we don't throw it on. Everything is made specially every year. For, for us, it's, a, it's about ensemble delivering a great show, and I think in terms of that, we're, we are one of the best. We all like to look our best, and Greenwich is known for looking good. But there's a lot of building work and changes. What's Greenwich going to look like in 20 years' time? I've been to investigate. Fifteen years from now, Greenwich will look a lot different. It's estimated that between 25 and 30,000 new homes will be built in the borough in that time. So what's the plan? Well, to put it simply, there is no big overall plan. But there is something being looked at here. This £80 million building, just up the road from the Cutty Sark, opened last year. It will train the architects of the future, a cutting-edge modern design in an area dominated by heritage. We're um, standing on one of the 14 roof gardens here at Stockwell Street, number 10 and 11 Stockwell Street. We have just won a Royal Institute of British Architects National Award for Excellence in Architecture for this building. Um, the building was specially designed for creative people, has architectural and creative studios, and the building is designed specifically so students can see how it goes together and how it's made. But how does the school fit in with how Greenwich might look in 2030? Well, it's one year into a five-year project which involves local sites in their work. The school set up east of Eden, 
after suggestions of collaboration from local community groups and businesses. It's a design research project that encompasses all parts of the department from first year to postgraduate. The project looks at three areas, East Greenwich, Greenwich Peninsula and Thamesmead. This area of the southeast of London is one of the most dynamic and rapidly changing areas and for students to be engaged with what's going on around them at this part of the 21st century is incredibly important. We wanted to make sure that we made a kind of statement about being here and also to create links and connections with local community groups, local businesses. It was a bold thing to put something as modern um, as that into this very historic setting. I've been surprised at how very, very uh, well received the building has been. And the idea of using the talent inside the building to, 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 to make life better, make our environment better, is also something that's very attractive to people. Greenwich Riverfront and the peninsula are home to some of the largest continuous brownfield developments in London. For some of the projected targets to be hit, the rate of house building here needs to double. The problem with any sort of change is you have to bring a lot of people together. Um, you either allow things to just come as they may and you wind up where you wind up, or you can take a sort of more uh, thoughtful approach to that, which begins to look at uh, how we might want to encourage and shape that kind of economic development activity uh, for the betterment of the community as a, and, 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 and the city as a whole. We recognise that quantity has to happen because of the demand on housing, but we want to make sure that it's not quantity at any cost. It does need a, you know, a kind of um, an organisation locally to make sure that things that are promised happen, or things that we don't want to happen don't happen. Our bit of East Greenwich, or East Greenwich per se, is a real place and it is being a little bit forgotten about. The project will enter its second year this academic term. So, how was year one? One of the most interesting things that's come out of this year's research is the students picking up on the fantastic industrial and technological heritage of the peninsula itself. I think it's important for students to be able to connect to that past. So part of the project is not just to be looking forward, but also going back in history as well. I think architectural education is about developing creativity and imagination. Inevitably a lot of the stuff is pretty esoteric. But if you look at some of the material about landscape and about housing, then there are some very interesting ideas there about how our world could be greener, how it could look better, how it could feel better. The key is bringing together the community, developers and students' research and it's hoped an increasing number of people will engage with the idea over the future years. You saw it here first. I think the hope really is to try and get on the one hand a way of generating ideas uh, which are I suppose disconnected from the political discourse and even from the everyday realities of what's possible in budgets and, and so forth. We saw a fantastic resource in the university with great teachers, great staff, great imagination in that building and we wanted to see that linked to improving life for everybody in, in Greenwich. You need a way to somehow connect the, the stuff that the students are doing with, with the, the interests of the community and I think that's the kind of job ahead of us is to sort of begin to start that, that dialogue. And I don't even set a kind of five year limit on it. I think it is something that will be, should be part of the whole way in which the Department of Architecture and Landscape operates while it's in Greenwich. They need to be part of a global design and architecture culture um, and this location here allows us to be much easier part of that culture and contribute to architectural discourse worldwide. And that's it for this series of The Greenwich Show. We hope you've enjoyed the episode. And we'd love to hear from you on social media, email, or the website. All our films and those included in the first series can be watched on our YouTube channel. We'd very much like to thank the team for putting the second series together. And of course, thank you for the films made by you. 
Hopefully we'll be back soon with a new series and once again, thanks for watching. The Greenwich Show, in partnership with Visit Greenwich, time after time. Series 2, made by you.